Steve says, when you select a stock, do you immediately buy a put? If so, why not just start out with a married put position? Steve, and that's exactly what I do. If I'm opening a new married put, I'm going into power options, going into the married put tab, and I'm going into search. And I'm going to pick directly from this list. CF was one of the examples we used in one of those last webinars. Uh, we were discussing the, um, actually, it's one of the ones I'm looking at right now. But we were discussing the hat trick for locking in gains. Uh, I believe we're using CF as an example. Arista is one we used in one of those other previous presentations. Uh, Micron AMD was an example we used on one of our live webinars here a few weeks ago, for the married put position. So same process we sort of talked about earlier for Pavel. And same process, uh, we just looked at it a little bit. Oh, I'm going to make some changes. This is the default radioactive screen that follows the concepts of the blueprint, follows the search criteria that's in the blueprint. Now, it's looking for a maximum risk between 3.5% and 9.5%. I'm going to tweak that to meet my needs. I'm going to look maybe less than 8.1%, 35 to 8.1%. We don't want to go more than 20% in the money. I'm keeping that. We're looking for stocks. Above the 50-day moving average, some volatility, good average stock volume, and positive earnings per share growth. That, again, goes back to Pavel's discussion here for this particular screen. But I know my account size, and in general, I'm usually not opening married put positions on stocks over $85 per share because that portion of my portfolio is of a size where I maybe want to have five or six positions open. I could open $150. I could open a $180 stock, for example, but that would be taking up too much of the position, right? So I'm going to limit it to be 85. I have no statistics, Steve, that this works better than leaving it up to 200. It's just what I prefer to do with this strategy in my personal account. I think Ernie does better with the higher price stocks is what I'm going to say to that one. But I still have a nice list on this position, on these positions with the risk level that I want, the put that I want. And so to answer your question, Steve, yes, I'm looking at this as one trade. I am immediately going to buy this stock and this put together after I do my research. Again, look at the stock chart, maybe take a look at the company information, the stock research tool, um, and you know, evaluate the profit and loss chart as well, just to run a couple what-if scenarios. Am I comfortable if the stock falls 5% in the next 30 days, opposite of what I expect it to do? Am I comfortable if the stock falls 10% in the next 60 days, if the market does take a correction? So I'll run those sort of what-if scenarios, Steve, as well, and then I'm entering it as one whole position. Now, if you're referring to the uh, video that we posted the other day, the hat trick for locking in gains, that is not an approach that we typically use. I very rarely just buy stock anymore, unless it's not optionable and I really like the stock, but I don't like to do that. I play mostly with just options and stocks protected by the put. So when I pick a new stock to buy, it's from that list. And it's in a married put combination. What we were showing in this video here is that we do have a lot of customers. I have um, the gentleman I mentioned uh, in that video who had Apple. Where am I going? Oh, I want to go to married put and I want to go to the insurance tool. He had been trading uh, naked puts on Apple for a long time and he got the stock put to him at a relatively low price. And then he started doing covered calls against the position to continually lowering the cost basis as well. So he had Apple. I think I said 110 in the webinar, but I think his, his price is around 112. Apple, you know, is up near 180. And I'll just go to June. I think it has June options. Yes, excellent. So what this tool does is if you are in a position where you have stock at a much lower price, you have unrealized locked-in profit, and you're looking to lock in most of that while still leaving the upside open, this is the approach that's discussed in the hat trick for locking in gains. I want to decide using the proper put, maybe the 185 here with a stock at 178. Um, yes, the 195 gives me the most locked in profit, but I don't want to go too deep in the money and sort of hedge myself out of the position. I think the 185 is a really good one here. So if this was my cost basis at 112 on Apple, I'd use the insurance tool. Just going one or two strikes in the money here, about two strikes in the money. I have an unrealized 59% gain in the stock, but I'm holding it longer term. I, I keep expecting more growth, but I want to protect against uncertainty in 2022 or anything I fear might come along those lines. 
So I'm going to use this put. I'm going to buy it at $17.50. That's going to increase my cost basis to roughly $129.50 with a guaranteed exit of $185. So I'm guaranteed a 43% return in the absolute worst case scenario while still having the upside open. And we can go to, I'm sorry, profit and loss chart there. What's another reason why I like the 185 here? Well, another reason why is that it's close enough to here. I could go out maybe 15 days. It's not going to be that great. Oh, it's not bad at all. 125 or so, 130. So I could maybe sell a call right away in that case. And now I'm back up to max return of 54.7% with a guaranteed worst case profit of 44% because I still want to hold on to the stock position. What was the other? That was the two goals of the hat trick. What did I just do? I insured my position to lock in the gains, rewarded myself for picking a good stock and having a good cost basis, generate another $1.32, $132 in the position. But I want to leave the upside open so I can convert that to the extra call. The long call on top of it, we'll use the 190. Mm, yeah, I'll use the 190. It's, it's more than, I don't like to go that close to 50% of the premium I'm selling, but I don't want to go 10 points apart on this one either. So let's just put this at 150, 160, at 60, excuse me. Put that at 60 cents. There we go. All right. Now, what have I done? Locked in a profit of 43%. Worst case scenario, that's the only way I'd see that low of a return <laughs> in this case um is because um i'm sorry if, if i held it all the way to jude and the stock was trading below that price okay the the put that i bought the 185 that's the worst case scenario but now here what have i done i've locked in a fair amount of the unrealized profit that's guaranteed unlike a stop order which can be violated this cannot guaranteed that money in the worst case scenario Got a little bit of income to reward myself and use an extra long call to leave the upside open in case the stock continues to grow, but I'm only using 15 days. I don't expect it to go to 220 or 230 in the next 15 days, but anything is possible. Okay. Yeah, so this is, uh, Richard says, is the married put approach still representing about 60% of your investment portfolio? Uh, yeah, 40 to, I'd say 40 to 50. It's usually around 50 to 60, Richard, but right now it's, it's about um, 40, I think. Yeah, I think it's about 40% uh, in that case. And I only have three positions open right now. And I meant to close one of them today, but I didn't uh, in that case. Um, so I still have the three positions open right now. I'm going to close Ally Financial. I'm going to adjust. Yeah, I'm just going to close the one. I'm going to close Ally Financial maybe tomorrow. Um, but I'm not going to open a new one until the new year because I'm afraid people that follow the Fusion portfolio might not see it. I might not even close Ally tomorrow. I might wait until Monday. Long story short, then I'm going to adjust uh, the Barry position to extend it to go further out in time as it's going in the proper direction now after making some adjustments with the put. And I'm going to do an adjustment on the ESI. And I'll be opening probably two new positions in Jan. No, I'm sorry, three. Three new positions probably in January to get back to five positions in the Mary Put portfolio, which will probably bump me up to about 45, closer to 50% of uh, the total portfolio that I'm trading with in that case. 